Hey there, thank you for tuning in to SimTech channel. When designing an electrical uh, network or an electronic circuit, no matter how good your circuit is, somehow sooner or later you'll have to deal with short circuit problem in your circuit. This is why if you open and look at every electronic product, you're going to find a fuse on the input. And as we all know, this is so that it can break the short circuit current when it occur by replacing a fuse you can get your circuit up and running again obviously you will have to get to the bottom of the problem the same principle is applied in electrical circuit basically in power system network so no matter how good your power system have been established you need to know your potential short circuit current so that you can spec circuit breakers and other equipment like cable sizing and so forth so that they can handle the short circuit current as they arise as you can see here i've got a short circuit of 52 kilo amps but now if your cable were not designed to handle a 52 kilo amp short circuit current when that happens you're going to have fire so this is why in this tutorial i'm going to show you via dick silent how you can compute a simple short circuit analysis with ease and we're going to use tutorial 4 on my playlist on fault current calculations to basically demonstrate how you can do a simple short circuit calculation in Dick Silent Power Factory. Now, this tutorial 4 uh, is basically our case study in this tutorial. So, if you want to really follow along, please watch this tutorial. The link is provided in the description box fault current calculation playlist, and you're going to find this tutorial. I explained. Uh, clearly how we got into all these answers here this is our case study and we have a situation of two generators here having a 800 mv potential short circuit current and 1200 mv respectively so they are interconnected via a transmission line here with a 0 0.5 ohm uh, reactance okay so we they're basically forming a grid here so now before we actually move into Dick Silent here, I want to make a very important point. Short circuit current calculation cannot take place without knowing the per unit diagram or the per unit impedance diagram of your network. Because that is what will actually inform us of what the short circuit current will be at each point. That is why you see here. They want us to know what's a short circuit current at F1 because obviously the current flowing from generator 1 will flow straight to this point here and the current from generator 2 will pass through the transmission line and through the fault and also at F2 will take the similar route. So, but now this current will obviously go through some impedances, right? The per unit impedances and that will determine the potential of the short circuit current of or of the short circuit MVA. That is why per unit uh, calculations in short circuit current is very, very vital to understand because it is one of the foundational tools that we have for simplifying and analyzing short circuit fault. Now, I just want to say that these uh, tutorial are very generic. Uh, most of these power system tutorial on SimTech channel. Um, they are very fundamental, very important for many of you. But I've recently started making appeal for uh, people to join my channel membership and I also have a Patreon site that you can join because I often receive comments of people requesting a specific tutorial that, that I might not be able to do them now because I have other uh, things I'm attending to. But if someone have a special need, I can always make a short tutorial, two, three, four minutes explaining exactly what a person uh, is struggling with. So please, uh, if you are able to join my channel membership, do so. Or my Patreon site, please do so. That will be much appreciated. And obviously the support will go a long way uh, for us to continue improving in this venture. And for those of you who have already done so, join my channel membership. I thank you so very much for the support and together we can do more. And in the same line, if you find this tutorial useful, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That will be highly appreciated. So looking at this tutorial, you can see that uh, we were basically just provided with the short circuit MVA 
and then we chose here the base mv of 800 mv and we basically got a pay unit uh, impedance for generator 1 to be 1 j per unit generator 2 0 0.667 j per unit then based on the 0 0.5 reactance of the line z actual we then were able to calculate the base impedance here which is 0 0.151 ohm and from that we deduce our per unit uh, impedance which is the actual impedance uh, divided by the base impedance then we get uh, per unit impedance of 3.311 j per unit right now based on these per unit values we can then work out the per unit impedance as you can see and now i'm not going to go through the tutorial now because you can watch it on uh, on the playlist great now what i'm trying to say here is that using dixal and power factory we can demonstrate that by only entering the uh, transmission line impedance and the potential short circuit mv and the voltage the base voltage at which these generators are operating we will be able to obtain the same short circuit current and short circuit mva uh, result as we got in the manual calculations okay so that's what we're trying to prove here and see how powerful dig silent power factory is uh, with computing the short circuit current and obviously if you are working as a power system engineer or an operator you need to run calculation you're not gonna do them manually you may uh, depending on circumstances but if you've got a tool like dig silent you won't have to do this calculation manually you're going to compute them and analyze uh, the result so that's what we're going to do here now without any further ado let's get rolling so what we're going to do here is let's first provide the two bus bar for our generator here great so here we go single bus bar one and single bus bar two great so that's exactly what we need we exit there then we need to bring the grid uh let's connect the first grid onto our bus bar here and we're gonna use uh, cubicle one there uh, let's connect the second grid onto the second single bus bar here okay then we exit then let's just flip this at the bus bar level here flip at bus bar okay so the next thing here is to uh, bring in the interconnect so let's get our interconnect line here so bus bar one and we're gonna use cubicle two then uh, let's connect it this way uh, that way it will make more sense to us and on second bus bar and we also going to use cubicle two on this bus bar so this basically complete our power system network the next thing we need to do is to basically enter the parameters in order for dig silent to complete and compute our our short circuit calculation so let's go ahead and double click on the external grid and head over to the short circuit section and over here we're gonna change the short circuit mva to 800 mva that's basically the maximum short circuit mva for the generator on the left okay and on the minimum value here we have to change it uh, to let's say 600 mva otherwise we will actually execute for the maximum short circuit current because that's what the problem statement says great that basically all we need here because we don't have to calculate any per unit impedance it will automatically calculate it for us and we're going to say okay and the next thing is the bus bar level here we need to change it to 11 kilovolt okay because that's a base voltage for this section and the second bus bar must also be changed to 11 kilovolt okay then the next uh, grid basically the second grid here we can also head over to the short circuit section and the maximum mva is 1200 mva and the minimum we can leave it at 800 mva or let's rather put it at 1000 mva it's not going to have any effect here because we will be executing uh the maximum short circuit 
uh, current calculation okay then the next thing here is basically the parameters for the line so let's go ahead double click on our line here and we need to create a new project type basically a new line and enter the basic information for our land so we know that the line is operated at 11 kilovolt the rated current here one amp no problem and the cable type is basically an overhead line and basically a three-phase system and the reactance here is basically 0 0.5 for the positive and we can also put 0 0.5 for the zero sequence reactance so that basically all we have to do here dig silent will basically already going to compute it for us because this is the actual impedance of the line but it will have to compute the base impedance and the per unit impedance as we've done on tutorial 4 of the short circuit calculation okay so that basically all we need here great now if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that will be highly appreciated great now let's go ahead and execute our short circuit calculation so we're going to start on this first bus by here on the grid external grid with the 800 uh, mega volt ampere of potential short circuit current so when i click on calculate short circuit current okay then we're going to obviously iec 6909 and we calculate for the maximum short circuit current and let's go ahead and execute okay so you can see here we've got a short circuit current of 53.4 kilo amp with a short circuit mva of uh, just over a thousand mva okay obviously the short circuit mva uh, contribution from this point here is 800 we know that we're getting 800 mega volt ampere from this external grid at 41.9 kilo amps but we got 53 here obviously the other short circuit current contribution is coming from this grid here now this is where it's very important uh, to know your per unit impedance now we know that uh, this grid have a 1200 uh, mva of potential short circuit current but it's only supplying 218 through this transmission line now the reason why it's only supplying 218 is obviously we got the per unit impedance on this uh, transmission line that is actually reducing the magnitude of the short circuit current so as a result we're only getting 11.4 kilo amps that is adding up to the 41.9 and we're getting 53.4 kilo amps of current so that tells you how important per unit impedance is in power system now that we know the short circuit current at this point here we can now go ahead and do a sizing of cables and obviously we can specify circuit breaker ratings and all sort of things now you can see the peak current here is 135.2 kilo amps so you have to ensure that the breaker that you're going to select there is able to handle that 135.2 kilo amps of peak short circuit current okay now let's now move on to this side here now we can see that the direction of the current will change okay now the current at this point here is flowing from this side all the way down here now the fault is going to move to this point here as you'll see it is also explained in tutorial 4 now the fault current is now going to change direction so it's going to move from this grid here through this load and from here now let's see how the fault is going to look like now obviously from this point on you can see that the fault current will be slightly higher because the contribution from this external grid is going to be slightly higher compared to this 41.9 kilo ohms contribution because we know that this grid have a 1200 mva potential short circuit uh, volt ampere so let's go ahead and calculate it short circuit calculation and you have to make sure you calculate for the maximum and execute there we go 73.4 kilo amps now if you compare this result with the one obtained in the manual calculation you realize that it is within the margins right so now the fault contribution 
uh, this one here is contributing 62.9 kilo amps okay at 1200 mva and this one is only contributing 10.4 at 200 mva and again you can see that the imposition the, the the fault current imposition here depend on on the line here because if we change this line you're going to realize that the short circuit is going to change okay so let's go ahead and change this so we're going to reduce it let's say it's just 0 0.2 the actual impedance of this transmission line we say okay okay now we're going to execute again this side and i can tell you uh, for free that uh, the short circuit current at this point here is going to be uh, much higher because the per unit impedance of this line have been decreased you see now we're getting 19.09 kilo amps at 363 megavolt ampere now this is going to remain the same because uh, it only affecting the contribution of this grid here via this transmission line but the overall fault here is no longer 73 it's now went to 82 kilo amps so this proves uh the point that uh, per unit impedance per unit diagram per unit calculations is vital is very crucial in short circuit calculation for power system network so that is it guys for this tutorial so if you find it uh, useful interesting please make sure you give it a thumbs up and drop the comment in the comment section if you have any question and i will attend to it as soon as i have time and if you want to stay up to date with simtech channel please make sure you hit the subscribe button until next time cheers